the, uh, <coughs> it's a little too breezy uh, first uh, uh, sections of this title, but you get the uh, message. Uh, uh, one of the drivers, the motives for this uh, was uh, partly the fact that uh, aside from having been involved in, in trials, uh, randomized controlled trials in the health sector as well as welfare, transportation, uh, 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 criminology, and uh, certainly education, uh, I got tired of producing reports uh, or in which uh, I was in, invited out to dinner early on in the, in the uh, uh, conduct of the trials. Uh, certainly by the people interested in the intervention that was being tested. And usually after I submitted my report, I was uh, not invited out to dinner. <laughs> and as to say, we have a, a lot of stuff doesn't work out there. We have the benefit of the controlled trials to find out what does. But um, I want to get a little bit beyond uh, that. Uh, in particular, uh, I'm also an ex-engineer. And I've had stuff fail on me when I was a practicing engineer. Uh, and we used to take a lot of uh, trouble to understand why the failures occurred. There's a, a state of the art out there. We could go into any bookstore at uh, Crock and Dentano's and so on and easily find uh, books entitled with titles like Why the Bridge Fell Down or Why the Building Collapsed and so on and so forth. Well, they're kind of worth reading. We in the social sciences, including criminology, don't have a, a kind of body of, of work that's more or less coherent. Uh, directed toward uh, orderly postmortems, orderly uh, uh, kinds of after-the-fact uh, uh, thinking. Uh, it's always certainly possible to avoid uh, uh, uh <coughs> the prospect of failure or thinking about it. I have uh, some students, especially from other cult cultures, in which the idea of studying failure is bad karma. Uh, it's just going to bring a bad luck and it's going to follow you around and uh, besides that you might wind up making a, a, developing a career, a reputation as an ambulance chaser, uh, and so on. Well, uh, there are other, other uh, uh, more subtle ways to avoid uh, uh, failure. I have some corrections colleagues in, in uh, <coughs> some Australian states uh, recently informed me that, uh, uh, that uh, they use nuanced definitions in the context of a performance indicator, an outcome variable, called, uh, quote, escape, end quote. Uh, escape from prison, that is. An escape is not an escape, for example, unless the body is missing for 24 hours. If, after 24 hours, the convict returns to the prison voluntarily, this is denominated as, quote, an unexcused absence, unquote. <laughs> if our convict is released temporarily to attend college courses outside the prison, which is a worthy enterprise, um, but does not come back, this is labeled at least temporarily as, quote, uh, a failure to return, end quote, as opposed to an escape. Uh, this has caused no end of difficulty in making comparisons about escape rates across the states in Australia. So, but <coughs> the point is, put aside the obvious shenanigans uh, for a moment and uh, assume that uh, there's good intentions and reasonable clarity in what we're uh, trying to get at. Uh, just to make sure we're all talking from the same page, uh, the, uh, as a statistician, I regard the benefits of these randomized controlled trials as uh, basically a, a statistically unbiased estimates of effect. That is, put baldly, a fair comparison that appeals to the public, appears to courts, judges, different kinds of folks. Uh, the statistical statement of one's confidence in the result or a formal test of a hypothesis, a p-value, that's uh, technical, but from a logical scientific point of view, it's, the, it's that first bullet that, that really counts. Uh, and we can make uh, causal inferences. There are just lovely examples <coughs> that come out, have come out of this, uh, this uh, uh, center uh, uh, last couple of days uh, and uh, lots of interesting material on the uh, leads on the website to the trials that are being run by folks here. Um, okay, the uh, vulnerability, <coughs> um, and there are always vulnerabilities here, uh, lies partly in uh, <clears throat> the fact that <clears throat> if I behave like uh, uh, an abiding statistician, uh, at the end of the trial, I can make, if things look good, I can make a legitimate, uh, 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 well-circumscribed statement, de uh, declaration, that the uh, difference in outcomes between A and B, or A's, say, the new thing that uh, you're hoping will work, B is a control condition, is statistically significant, and it's big, right? It's a not a matter of chance that we got this big effect. It looks dependable, right? Uh, or we not, may not be able to say that. If the difference is big and statistically significant, we're happy campers. This is a joy. 
a pleasure. A rare one, but a pleasure nonetheless. The more common event is when the difference is small or not discernible. This leaves everybody dangling. It's kind of caught, caught up short. You're not invited out to dinner. Uh, and this is often, dis uh, at least in uh, the areas with which I deal, enormous resources, certainly in the education sector, brain power and whatnot, dedicated to uh, concocting A so as to do better than B. And uh, uh, yet, despite the brain power, despite the money, despite the resources, the time, investments, the good intentions, fails to meet expectations. Uh, now, <coughs> The statistical tradition, as I said, is to, you know, it's, things are not significant. You know, and sometimes they'll be, as a statistician, I'm not entitled to speculate about why often. But uh, I just give the report. The Royal Statistical Society's uh, motto in Latin, I think it's on its, its escutcheon, says, quote, let others thrash it out, right? If things don't come out right. If things don't come out the way we wanted them to. Uh, and I think we can get beyond that. Okay, let me uh, give a questionary approach. Uh, the six questions, and I'll try to roll through them. The word questionary, incidentally, comes from the uh, uh, Inquisition. The Inquisition was the person who asked the questions of the person who was being tortured in order to extract the information from. It's a, not terribly used very often nowadays, but I think it deserves some, a resurrection. Uh, uh, and uh, so, uh, Briefly, how might we define failure meeting expectations? That sounds like a reasonable thing to do. What empirical approaches might we use to estimate the rates? That sounds like a sort of good idea. What might the new intervention, or how the new intervention, A, might be designed uh, so as to reduce the likelihood of failure to meet expectations? Now, as a statistician, I shouldn't be monkeying with that particular question, but I have to because this just, I keep seeing some recurring problems. How do we design uh, controlled trials? A priori to better learn from the inevitable failures. We're designing for success, typically, as opposed to what is a more reasonable expectation of not success, or not big success, anyway. How might we learn about plausible reasons for the failure, expect post facto, and how might we accumulate dependable knowledge in this uh, sector? All right, let me roll through the uh, first question is uh, item who defines? Who's going to define failure? This is a risky business. Uh, and Phelan's remark, uh, where's Phelan? Where'd Phelan leave already? OK, was here. his remarks about being bullied by uh, outside uh, advisors, I'm saying you should change all your ways because you've been doing it wrong for 30 years and so on and so forth. Uh, Nelson Augman, a fine writer, uh, uh, who got criticized occasionally by academics writing in the London Times or someplace. Uh, uh, declare that the vocation of assessing the failures of better men can be turned into a comfortable livelihood provided you back it up with a PhD. All right? Now that's what I want to avoid. Uh, this, it's, it's, it's cynical, but there's it, a kernel of truth there. And it, you wanna, getting well beyond that perspective sounds like a good thing to do. And uh, roughly speaking, I think it ought to be up to the scientists and the practitioners to uh, think about this stuff as opposed to uh, sticking it into, the, into forums like uh, 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 legislative hearings in which uh, political theater, as opposed to kind of more productive ways of going uh, doing business get, uh, uh, get done. Uh, BP, incidentally, I think is uh, going to be a good example of this. Uh, lots of press coverage, lots of political stuff, lots of blame laying, lots of vituperation. Uh, but understanding where the failures lay, how they lay, what happened, and so on, is going to be f f mechanically as an engineer, as opposed to managerially, is going to be uh, uh, terribly important. OK, how to find failure. Uh, what I'll do f for simplicity is define it uh, the way we've been doing it in the Campbell collaboration, the uh, What Works Clearinghouse, the Cochrane collaboration, define an effect size bef that uh, you expect beforehand, before the controlled trial is designed. So you can design it so as to be sensitive, to do a power analysis, statistical power analysis, so as to enable uh, the detection of an effect. It, you can construe this, roughly speaking, in English as a, a simple ex, uh, expected difference in the rates of recidivism or in crime or uh, more, in more complex standard deviation units. Or, uh, and this is uh, the indicators, these effect sizes are n not on common jargon uh, in the trade at uh, IES and uh, Institute for Education Sciences, which does a lot of controlled trials in education. 
as well as National Institute of Justice. Uh, and I'm going to sort of just declare that the failure to achieve this expected effect size is the failure to achieve expectations. OK, empirical estimates. Why estimate these, estimate these failure rates at all, assuming you can concoct a good definition? Uh, well, John Grant, is, uh, one, uh, the person who wrote the first uh, major statistical, uh, put together the first major statistical text in the Western world in, I think, 1699, it was published, uh, entitled The Bills of Mortality for the City of London and the Kingdom, or something of that sort. Uh, his question as to why he would even bother doing this is uh, uh, his own answer in his book was a, a, a quote, good, certain, and easy government. It's not a bad uh, uh, quote. It's actually a, a remarkable uh, uh, precedent for evidence-based policy also. I might say in the back of the, after <coughs> 100 or so pages of uh, numbers of baptism, numbers of babies born, numbers of troops, numbers of, t quote, teeming women, women of childbearing age. At the end of this, uh, the, this uh, uh, <clears throat> mind-numbing array of numbers, he has a chapter in which he says, and well, you might ask, uh, why groping after all these, these numbers? His first answer, he gives three answers. The first one was something like, if you have to, have to ask a question like that, you're not going to understand the answer. The second one was, it's in the interest of the kingdom, it's evidence-based policy, to get these numbers. Uh, and the third one was uh, one that academics would treasure. He said, because it's fun doing this stuff. OK, try to estimate, uh, come up with estimates. So we, you can look at Dun & Bradstreet's for, for business failure and startup rates and stuff like that. This is, the idea here is not much different. Uh, in uh, doing some preliminary work, this is all prelim preliminary, uh, in the medical sector, it does turn out to be the case that some uh, efforts to understand uh, success and failure rates uh, based on controlled trials for innovative medical surgery has been done. And roughly speaking, it looks as if 20% uh, of the time you do some good. That's where the plus is. 20%, 60% of the time, it's not clear that you're doing any good or any worse than conventionally. And about 20% of the time, you kill people more often than you might uh, want to. Right? Uh, the effects are negative presumably. Uh, some older literature on, uh, on controlled trials in, uh, in social programs, this is welfare, uh, some education stuff, um, some uh, prison stuff, or some uh, correction stuff. Uh, it looks as if about uh, the best you can expect is 30% success rate. 30% of the time, you come out with a declaration that the effect size is sizable. It meets expectations, roughly speaking. The rest of the time, you're not. Uh, education interventions, uh, I was uh, technically the PI for the What Works Clearinghouse when it first started up. Uh, this is eight years ago, $25 million uh, contract to do systematic reviews in the education sector of What Works based heavily on uh, identifying controlled trials. Most of the time we had uh, not much work to do because uh, commercial uh, packages and education, uh, well, commercial publishers do not often do evaluations of their own stuff. 